Hey guys, this is Travis and welcome back to the channel. So if you're in the market for a thin, lightweight, speedy laptop, I want you to stay tuned because I might just have the computer for you. All right, let's check it out. All right, so we got a lot of features to talk about with this laptop. Uh, my prior laptop was a 2013 model MacBook Pro. And while it had been a faithful laptop that had served me well, it was just getting awfully laggy. And the school district where I teach was replacing uh, the teacher's laptops with new MacBook Airs. Uh, this one does have the solid state drive and it is definitely, definitely you see an increase in the performance. So let's just go ahead and run through the specifications according to Apple just to let you know what they have to say about it. So this is the uh, mid-2017 model. Uh, the retail price on it from the Apple website is $999 brand new. It does have a 13.3 inch diagonal LED backlit glossy widescreen, widescreen display. Uh, supported resolutions are 1440 by 900 native and then the resolution decreases from there. Uh, storage is 128 uh, gigabyte uh, PCIe based solid state drive and it is configurable up to 512 gigs. Now I just have the 128 gig model and I've got about 46 gigabytes of storage space left with all the OS updates and the current programs that I'm running on this model. Uh, the processor is a 1.8 gigahertz dual core Intor, uh, Intel Core i5 with a turbo boost up to 2.9 gigahertz and 3 megabits of shared level 3 cache. Uh, you can configure it up to a 2.2 gigahertz dual core Intel, Intel Core i7 with turbo boost up to 3.2 gigahertz. So you can definitely spec this thing out if you want to. Uh, the memory is 8 gigabytes of 1600 megahertz um, LP DDR3 onboard memory. I believe it is not upgradable. I believe it's soldered to the motherboard if I'm not mistaken. Uh, battery and power, they're talking about up to 12 hours. Uh, which is basic uh, internet use up to 30 days of standby time. You got a 54 watt lithium polymer battery and it does come with a 45 watt MagSafe 2 power adapter with cable management. Uh, that's one thing you need to take into consideration. If you've been using old MacBooks or PowerBooks and so on, uh, they've been using the same adapter, same plug for quite a while. Well, these MacBook Airs are going to use the MagSafe 2 plug. So we'll show that plug off to you and show you what it looks like. And I'm actually using an adapter with one of my old chargers uh, to keep it charged up. Uh, graphics and video support, you got the Intel HD graphics uh, 6000. Um, it does say that uh, it does support a uh, resolution max of 3840 by 2160 at 60 hertz on an external display and you also have the uh, Thunderbolt digital video output. So if you're into that, you can definitely look that up if you want to. Your camera is a 720p FaceTime HD camera and uh, we'll take a look at the charging in the ports. On the left hand side, you've got the uh, MagSafe 2 uh, plug-in, you've got a USB 3 port, a headphone port, and your dual microphone uh, sound inputs are on the left side. On the right hand side, you've got the SDXC card uh, readers, so you can plug your SD cards in there if you want to. Another USB 3 port and a Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt 2 port, which is what I use to hook this computer up to the projector in my classroom. In terms of wireless, we've got uh, 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, um, it's also IEEE 802.11 ABGN compatible, and it does have Bluetooth 4.0. Uh, audio is going to be stereo speakers, dual microphones, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Uh, you do have a full backlit keyboard, and we'll talk about the keyboard here in a little bit. Um, other than that, it just starts to get into uh, more of the technical specifications, which I don't think will really affect the, uh, the regular user. Now, what I absolutely love about this laptop is just the weight. When I'm at a conference, when I'm lugging stuff around, um, I definitely notice the difference, the two to three pounds difference of this MacBook Air versus my old MacBook Pro. And uh, just for a little bit of privacy sake, I'll go ahead and cover up the, uh, the label for the high school where I teach. Uh, but again, checking out the design, very smooth design, very slick design. So when you're handling it, you do have to be a little bit careful. Uh, it does have, you know, kind of some sharp, thin edges, and so you got to make sure you got a good grasp on it. And with this uh, polished aluminum surface, it can be a bit slick and cold at times, so it is just kind of awkward to grab it once in a while. You have to be very careful with it. So again, like I mentioned before, your ports, okay, you've got your MagSafe 2 port right here, USB 3 headphones and microphone input. Uh, on the back, nothing on the rear. The other side over here, we got your SD card reader, your USB 3 plug and your port, and your Thunderbolt uh, display port video out port. Again, just an awesome little computer. Just just the, the, the solid state drive in this thing is just fantastic. So why don't we just go ahead and maybe uh, run some videos here real quick and we'll see what happens. This is just from my YouTube channel. It's just a 1080p video. Spools up real quick. Obviously this is going to depend a lot on your uh, internet connection and so on. But in terms of video, it does a fantastic job playing video. I want to go ahead and find a 4K video and we'll just see what happens real quick here.
Okay, so we're going to go ahead and just uh, cut back on the audio. Since 4K is basically going to be the future of video, if not a higher resolution, we are set to 4K right now, uh, 2160p essentially, and I do have the audio muted so that I don't get a copyright strike. Let's crank this up to full screen and just see how the video card handles what it has to do. Let's fast forward ahead just a little bit here. Now, bear in mind, you don't have um, an external drive on this thing. You can pick one up. I've actually purchased an Apple drive for about 50 bucks. You know, video is not bad. It does seem to struggle just a little bit, but that could also be my internet connection because I'm only running a 60 megabit uh, connection on the internet. But again, it does play for, for 4K video. Let's shrink that down just a little bit. Obviously, if you go to a smaller screen, you're going to have less lag less issues as you can see it's starting to speed up right now so if uh, 4k is something that you're interested in watching maybe you've got a Hulu or a Netflix service with 4k or Sling TV or whatever you're definitely going to be able to uh, to handle that route uh, let's just maybe uh, open up some basic apps here and just see what the speed looks like we'll check out iTunes and uh, I actually don't even have any pictures on this thing in order to save my hard drive so we won't do that but let's just do a little iTunes open and some basic apps and show you what you can expect I do want to uh, apologize for the messy desktop. I actually keep things organized by classroom, so the straight strips down is each of the different levels of Spanish that I teach. I've got all the work on standby ready to go. Um, and the kids in our school are actually all one-to-one -one school, so they all have uh, MacBook Pros. So if you just click and open up the hard drive, it's immediate, fast, responsive. Again, the solid-state drive is just awesome. And I do have this in my uh, gaming PC downstairs, which is also what I use to produce my YouTube videos. And uh, you know, solid state drives are definitely worth the, uh, worth the premium uh, and definitely worth maybe taking the cut in capacity in order to have a faster machine. So let's just open up Microsoft Office 2011, which I know it's old school, but it's the newest version that we use in our district, it, which is fine. Uh, we basically are a Google school, which is what we tend to use the, uh, the majority of the time. So just open up uh, PowerPoint. My old laptop, this would take sometimes 30 seconds, 45 seconds. Uh, it would crash quite, crash quite frequently, um, and again, it's just because I was running an old machine that only had 4 gigs of RAM in it. Uh, let's just go ahead and just take a, a blank template here and open it up. One second later, you're basically ready to go, and you can start from there if you want to. Uh, let's open up Microsoft Word real quick. Again, just to show you just the general speediness of it, it's definitely uh, very cool. There you go. Done. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, open up iTunes real quick. Just again, just trying to show you the general use in applications. It's not a laggy machine. It's very quick, very speedy. Love the screen. I actually have the brightness turned down quite a bit so it doesn't wash out on the camera here. Uh, iTunes, just from a fresh start. Click on it, boom, done. And uh, it's all set to go. You can start playing immediately, which again, I don't want to do, so I don't want to get a copyright strike on the channel. Uh, also, let's go ahead and close out iTunes. Now oh, we can leave it open. Just see what kind of bog down it does. Uh, iBooks. If you're somebody who uses iBooks. Okay. Again, I'm not signed in on this machine. I just got this back in uh, August and haven't used iBooks on here yet. But it looks like it's moving some books over. Got to sign in and it would pop up. Uh, the App Store. Click on the App Store and open it up. And again, you know, this is partially web-based too, so your speedier internet connection can have a bit of an effect on this also. But again, no problems at all. Uh, when it comes to uh, exporting video, it is fairly quick. It is fairly speedy. Uh, I don't really have an example to show you, but it's one of those things where, say, you got like a five-minute video. It's going to take maybe two, three minutes to export it to 1080p. Again, very speedy processor, which I absolutely love. Okay, so what about uh, Facebook? Okay, how, does, how well does that run on this thing? Because, again, you might be running a five-year-old machine that has some lag. Done. Ready to go. So, again, uh, you know, your browser has a lot to do with it, and this does have all the software updates, which is very nice, too. Now, one of the basic uh, performance tests that I like to run is to run the uh, Octane 2.0 test, and I do this on every machine in my collection. If you go back and watch my uh, reviews, you can see what the Octane score was for the devices that we tested on the channel. Let's just do this in real time, and while it's running, I'll just talk about using the machine in general. Uh, the battery time, I believe the 12 hours, I've been able to go through a full 8-hour school day without having it go into sleep mode, and I've got about 40% of my battery left, 30% of my battery left. Now, granted, my laptop's only about three months old, so it, uh, you know, it still has a strong, fresh battery that keeps a charge all day, but it's not an issue at all. I think you can definitely get an eight-hour work day out of one of these things as long as you uh, keep your display turned down and you're not running a bunch of videos or, you know, if you're playing music, that's really not a big deal. Uh, but we'll get to the trackpad here in just a little bit. So performance figures are looking pretty good for Octane. I'm expecting a decent score. 26,831. I mean, it performs probably about three to four times, five times faster than just a Chromebook that I have sitting around the house, which does a pretty good job itself. So definitely that i5 processor does work well. And this could have used the Turbo Boost at this point. I don't know. We don't know. But again, it's still very snappy and it, and it does run well. 
the uh, backlighting on the keyboard, I always have it set for automatic. I'm not sure if it's one of those things where you can force it to run all the time, but uh, again, the keyboard, uh, the backlighting is really nice on it. You can turn it up if you want to, and it is a lot brighter. Not sure if you can tell on camera, but it is perfectly usable, basically in complete dark. I do like the backlight keyboard. I find as the uh, older I get, it does help me quite a bit in low light situations with typing. Uh, trackpad is nice and smooth. It is fairly large. Does not get in the way, surprisingly. Um, if I had one complaint about this machine at all, the keys feel really, really shallow and a problem I run into, I guess it's kind of a good problem that I have, is I have a tendency to, to over type a little bit. Um, I was so used to the keyboard on the MacBook Pro that had you know deeper keys, uh, thicker keys, and I had to use a lot more force when I was typing that. With this machine, I had to soften up my touch quite a bit, and so I do frequently have typos in this, but it's just because I'm still getting used to, not necessarily the spacing, but just the overall feel and the touch. Um, again, with the keyboard, it's the keys are, are you know maybe you're looking at maybe a quarter inch of travel, and that's basically it. Um, again, just you can get used to it, but I guess if you're somebody who uses Chromebooks or you're used to a thin and light machine, that's pretty typical for this design. So I mean, it's not it's not the end of the world, but I would say it's probably one of the cons is if you're if you're old school and you've <laughs> grown up typing on a typewriter or you're used to a you know a Lenovo computer with you know thick keys on it, and you go to one of these machines, it could be just a little bit of an adjustment for the typing. But again, one of the minor gripes that I have about the machine. And uh, by the way, I'm running uh, Mac version 1013.6, uh, High Sierra. And when I had this initially, before I put anything else on my machine, I had about 70 gigs left over on the uh, solid state drive. So again, if you're somebody who does almost everything cloud-based or if storage and capacity is not a big deal for you, you should be fine. Otherwise, you might want to consider an external hard drive or maybe some sort of an external solid state drive. Uh, in terms of Google, we can check out Google real quick, just opening up Google Apps and so on. If you're somebody that's maybe, say you teach in a, in a, in a Google school or so on, you can get into Gmail pretty easily. Just click on it. Uh, again, I noticed the new version of Gmail is just a little tiny bit laggy. Uh, if you want, you can head over to Drive if you do stuff in Google Drive. I do have a ton of documents in Drive, so you can see how quickly that loads up. Uh, maybe check out uh, Docs here real quick also. There you go. Docs opens right up too. So again, very little lag even when you scroll. I mean, it loads stuff instantly. But again, a lot of this, one more time, it depends on... Uh, the speediness of your internet connection, although you can work offline and drive and uh, Gmail. All right, so again, just in terms of just a, a basic user experience, I think that you'd be happy with a machine like this. Now, again, you're looking at paying a premium. We're talking a thousand dollars here. Uh, again, the solid state drive definitely makes the difference in this machine. That and the eight gigs of RAM. I mean, I'm running 16 gigs in my video game rig, which isn't a whole lot, but uh, it was at the time when I built the machine. But again, you know, for, for what you're going to do for just your average user, somebody who just wants to use something, uh, just at, at, say at work or in the classroom, or if you're a teacher, you're looking to get these for your students, or maybe you want them for your college student, you know, you do get all the other apps that come along with the Macs themselves too. Uh, you know, you can also get Pages and Keynote, and you can get uh, some of the Mac apps that are out there too. Uh, but again, it's it's just one of those situations where, um, it you know, if you want something thin and light and you want to upgrade, definitely go that route. Now, I don't use Safari. Um, let's just do a quick demo with Safari. Let's just see how fast it opens up. I don't even know if I've even opened it on this machine before. You might be a Safari fan. I use Google because, like I said, we're a, a Google school, so it, it tends to work a little bit better with the apps, in my opinion. Uh, let's see, Safari. Go ahead and open it up. And it's basically ready to go. Okay, let's get that off of there. Let's just go ahead and open up uh, CNET.com, Cheapskate, one of my favorite web pages out there for daily deals on stuff. Yeah, speedy, fast, ready to go. So if you're a Safari user, uh, I notice I, I used to have a lot of problems running Safari on my MacBook Pro, and it uh, would be laggy and it would take a long time to open up. And a big part of that, I think, was just the lack of RAM. But uh, again, you know, I'm, for me, it's about saving time. I don't have time to sit around and watch apps open when I'm trying to teach my classes. And uh, I like to kind of keep things going. So uh, for me, it is definitely nice to have. Okay, so let's just bring it together for a little final conclusion about this laptop, and we will go from there. Okay, so what are my thoughts on this MacBook Air overall? So if you're a fan of Mac, and again, you want the thin and light experience, go this route. I don't think you can go wrong. You might be able to pick these up, refurbish or clearance through the Apple website for maybe a couple hundred bucks less, so consider that. These mid-2017 models might start showing up on the used market soon. Uh, again, consider going that route. Now, again, I am a huge fan of Windows 10. Okay, I'm a, I'm a PC user. That's what I edit all my videos on. It's what I do my gaming on. It's what I run my other YouTube channel with. And so you could get yourself a comparable, you know, Windows machine for probably $650, $600, maybe $499, especially when you start looking at Black Friday. 
Uh, you know, you go with whatever works best for you. If you're thinking about going the Mac route, this is probably your least expensive way to get into a brand new Mac. Uh, you might be able to get an educator discount too if you're a student or a teacher. Uh, your work might offer some sort of a discount. You might be a college student, so consider that too. So again, I'm not uh, trying to be biased, you know, you know, against Windows machines at all because I think they're great. Uh, you know, you do pay a little bit of a premium for, for Apple, and that's just how they are, and that's just how they're always going to be. So, anyways, I've been very happy with it. It's been awesome. I'm saving a ton of time not having to wait for apps to open. It's great that our school district went with these. I think our teachers are going to save a lot of time in the long run. Very efficient machines. It's nice having that new battery, and they do run really well. So, that's it, guys. I want to thank you for joining us today. Just a practical, kind of simple overview of the uh, MacBook Air. My thoughts about it as a user of about three or four months been very happy with it again no problems whatsoever out of the box it's been solid it's got a nice clear display it does have a glossy display so if you're somebody who doesn't like reflections that could be something you'll have to deal with not a touch screen just for the heads up just a heads up for you but overall it's been a great little machine oh real quick let me show you the uh, the power adapter here while well, I got you all right so I went ahead and just bought a little my regular charger is up in my classroom right now and so I don't have it with me but this is just a MagSafe One charger. This is an old charger I'd sit around from another old Mac that we bought a while ago. You probably saw it on the channel. Um, so what I have is a little $9 adapter here that I got from Amazon. It's actually made by Apple. What it does is it'll hook on that old MagSafe adapter and it's going to make it compatible with MagSafe 2. So this is going to work in your MacBook Air. So uh, if you've got a couple of these old chargers sitting around, don't get upset. Just get yourself an adapter. I know it's an extra 10 bucks. They should give it to you, but they don't. And this will get you going so that you can keep using your old chargers. I like to have one at home and one at school so I don't have to drag one with me wherever I go. Uh, so that's just uh, another, another option for you there too. So anyway, just before I forget about that. So guys, again, thanks for joining us. Thanks for checking it out. we got a lot of cool reviews, a lot of old vintage Mac reviews on the channel. Uh, you never know what you're going to see on this channel. You know, like I said, we're primarily technology based. So if you like what you see, please like or subscribe. You can follow us on Facebook, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Guys, and you can check me out all over the place. So new material heading your way soon, guys. So thanks for, thanks for watching. I want you to have fun. I want you to be safe. And as you know, we will talk to you soon. All right, take care, guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye.